Our planet has come under a period of ignorance, dumbness, and lowered vibration, and that time is now to move. It is past. There is no reason for ignorance, dumbness, or lowered vibration if you want, and if you happen to be of the sons of the God, and you don't respond to it, you will soon be dead. Now, isn't that a big threat? I'm not making the threat. I'm interpreting new and future knowledge. As a metaphysician is supposed to, you have to find out whether you can agree with it or not. There is no truth until you decide what truth is, and each person should find that truth out for his or herself. Human, by which if you look in the encyclopedias and dictionary, it says we're all human beings. That's a lie. We are not all human beings. Hugh man is animal man. Hugh was a god Hugh, which roared the lower plains again under the old teaching of the ancient Sudanese and, Nub and Nubian people and later on the so-called Egyptian people, which was a mixed race. You're going to find out just how mixed in a minute. Hugh man did not come from God or what we call the creator, but from lords or which we now call the Lord God and animals. They were a creation by scientists who we now refer to as Lord Gods. And they made human by engrafting and changing the animal life at different times as they found it on this planet and from other planets and dropped them off here. God man this is the key, and the ones that had the key to the Sphinx and the Pyramid, were from the sons of gods, or which we now refer to as the angels. And they were a cross between mankind and the sons of gods, or the angels. Understand this, in fundamentalist teachings, angels are those spirits who represent the Most High, and who fly around with wings, and live where this in Herod or some of the lower heavens and do the biddings of God himself. That is a fundamentalist interpretation. I do not decry a religion. I do not argue religion. I say that is only one interpretation of an angel. The other is those who mastered the angles, those who could bend light rays, those who understood the four pillars of the sacred sign of the swastika, which was not called the swastika, but a whole different name. It mastered those who could understood the four rays of consciousness necessary to exist on the fourth dimension, which Earth was supposed to have been into millions of years ago, but got held back by humans. Now, as humans who are we going to begin to die out and the sons of God must come to the fore so the angels can return, that awaken person is the one that will now go through changes like you have not seen as he attempts to throw off the dross, the animal, and come into his own consciousness. Mankind came from the lords of different planets and was soulless and could not reproduce. I repeat the three. Human, animal man made from animal species both on this planet and other planets. God-man, the sons of God and also sometimes interpreting with mankind, a made person again by Lord gods on other planets. And mankind again by strictly the lords of other planets in this one. Obviously, you can begin to see what I'm inferring. This has nothing to do with the creator, the prime causation, the cosmic universal logo eye. This has to do with people who evolve up the ladder and because of their knowledge of genetics, their knowledge of geography, their knowledge of astronomy, I'm sorry, astrology, their knowledge of astrophysics, when they come to a planet, you treat them like gods. All of the series that you see now, Babylon 5, Deep Space 9, and all the rest of it, are trying to show you what really may exist in this system and in other systems to let you come into what is now called the planetary brotherhood, to awaken from the idea that you are a lone important species, you are not, but now the earth is becoming an important place 
as we will find out for numbers of reasons over this weekend, as we get deeper even tomorrow than we're going to go tonight. This is to awaken those who are not soulless but have deep spiritual souls. One of the things that black people have found consistently is that in the face of adversity, they sing. In the face of adversity, they can laugh. In the face of adversity, they come together as a unit. And one thing seems to bother them. They know that they're supposed to worship something. They know that they're supposed to be spiritual entities, but they're not finding the results sometimes strong enough. They have found that in following religions fervently enough, really getting on fire with it, miracles do happen. But down deep, they're not satisfied because they still feel there ought to be a shortcut and they know that something's there, but it's just not quite right, and daggone it, it frustrates me no end. How many of you have actually felt like that? Don't lie, if you haven't, you haven't. Most of you do. That's why the church is now, the people are going to the strongest word, the best choir, and the best place where they can also make money and meet good mates, and they're falling away from the little churches that just can't make it anymore. Fundamentalism is separating from the advanced spiritual person. Again, I say this, and don't say I came here and talked about the churches and put them down. I'm not. Let each person go to any church they choose. It is their choosing. They will be responsible for their own souls if they have one. I'm saying that there's a difference between a spiritual person and a religious person. A spiritual person does not need a church for the home and temple of God that they find their souls in is the church, and how they keep it clean and how they keep it out of ignorance and what they do with it shows their manifestation of the God life. For the other, they need a religious fervor and constantly reminded because they do not have quite the soul that is risen to the point where they can again manifest the Creator within them. So they constantly have to remind themselves as the herd come together to give themselves the strength to carry on. That is changing. That's why you're going to find the church being attacked like never before and leaders in false churches falling like never before and that's why the fall wells and all the rest of it and you find them like little animals attacking each other, each one pulling each other down and the congregation suffering from it. Because man must learn he does not have to go to a church, he is the church. The temple of the living God is not just a folklore or a little thing that is said. The skull that you have, when properly understood, is a temple. It is so full of potential power and glandular interest there that the best way that the ancients could show it was to build a pyramid and say that that is the skull of man and then show him the difference between the Sphinx and the others that walk the life. Why is it you think that when Napoleon and the grenadiers came out onto the Giza Plateau and they saw the Sphinx looking Negroid in all of its glory. They went crazy and blew the nose off by sending 19 shot rounds into the nose and then coming back and climbing it and pickaxing at the nose and now they act like they don't know what the Sphinx looked, it used to look like. Why they don't, I don't know. They drew pictures of it and they saw what it looked like. It was a Negroid looking person looking outward, eastward. And it showed again that in front of this big pyramid, they put this skull and this animal. Three of the secrets of this pyramid, and there are eight, I'm sorry, there are seven secrets of the pyramid. Three of them is that the head of the man on the Sphinx and the body of the animal simply shows that if you notice there's wings on the Sphinx, there's scales on the Sphinx, there was a tail on the Sphinx, there were claws and hooves. It showed that everything that moved, crawled, or flew on Earth was subjugated or, domin or was dominated by the chief creature of Earth, the Son of God, the man's head. But everything on that man's body of the Sphinx needs those other things to survive until which time its consciousness rises enough and can outgrow them. It can eat fish. It can eat anything that moves and crawls, snails and everything else. It can breathe in air and live very well on that air, if you would. I appreciate that very much. And live on that air, if you would. It can do more things by adapting under different vibrations. It can consume everything on Earth and live on it, even to the herbs and the berries, if it goes up that far.